Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 114. Well, now that we're finally into spring, it is so good to focus on our health, on restoring. You know, spring is that um, wonderful time in life when we're supposed to really focus on rejuvenating our body and everything is just coming to life. And no matter where you are, you're noticing uh, the flowers popping up and the trees are blooming. And and, and even if you're down south, you just things look greener and happier and people are smiling more because finally... Finally, spring has come again, and I have the perfect guest for today. Megan Buer is a wonderful healer who, after many years of being sick, finally found her method of healing, and she's gone on for over 10 years to help people help uh, heal themselves because she was able to heal herself naturally. And um, this topic, I think some people, when it comes to energy healing, Some people don't really understand it, don't really respect it, um, think it's um, hooey, right? (laughs) Um, So I'd love for you to share your story. I have a story as well when it comes to energy healing. I totally was skeptical. I had a twisted ankle so bad that the the, the doctor said, I came home from the hospital with crutches. Doctor said, you're not walking for a week. This is like, I'm surprised this isn't. The doctor said it was so bad that a break would have been better. Because a break oh. would have at least it you know healed it healthfully, and he thought I was like I messed up my ankle that bad, and uh, my friend came over. She was a Reiki master, and I was like, whatever, fine, put your hands on me. And uh, 15 minutes later, I was dancing. The <laughs> swelling went down, the pain went down, and I literally was dancing on my feet and walking and no crutches. And uh, that was after like um, X-rays and the you know the doctor examining it and saying this is like the worst sprained ankle you'd ever seen so that's when I went from being a complete skeptic about natural you know energy healing and um and doing things that are out of our sight you know what I mean so when it comes to doing emotional work energy healing meditation those kind of things a lot of people say well if I can't see it I don't know if I can believe it or if I can't see it on a blood test I don't know if I can believe that it's it's going to work but here we have Megan, this wonderful guest today. It's going to share with us exactly what she does to help people heal, especially when all the other stuff isn't working. So welcome to the show, Megan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. I'd love for you to start by sharing your wonderful story because it's so intriguing. Yeah. You know, I was right where you were, the woo-woo stuff. Like it just, I kept resisting it. (laughs) You know, I was on this journey to health and, you know, it really started, my uh, youngest son was diagnosed with autism and we were at that point very mainstream, very closed off to anything alternative. And he was so miserable that I had no option. Um, Mainstream healthcare was not helping. And I, you know, at that mama bear kind of came out and I just, something had to change. So that's where our minds kind of started opening to the alternative way of, of healing. And we were doing all this stuff, you know, we were doing changing diets and doing uh, homeopathic remedies and supplements and herbs. And, um, he was doing a lot better, but I was, I really stopped taking care of myself. I threw myself into him and, um, my health started to deteriorate very quickly. And over the course of a few years, I went from just kind of having some anxiety to having full blown panic attacks that would last for hours, days, weeks at a time. Um, I would have, uh, you know, I had food intolerances. I was not able to digest anything. Um, I was just had this insane adrenal fatigue and then it all finally rolled into this final diagnosis of Hashimoto's. And, I was so frustrated because I was doing everything quote unquote right. And I, you know, had this great diet. I was taking all these expensive supplements. You know, we were doing the alternative stuff and I was getting sicker and it was so frustrating because it was like, I'm spending every waking moment researching and reading and, you know, resting and exercising, you know, I'm sleeping well, my diet's great, I'm not eating any sugar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I just, I just felt horrible. And 
Um, you know, doctors were scratching their head at me, just like, you know, we don't know what else, like you're doing everything right. We don't know what else to tell you. Um, and I, <laughs> I had kind of heard about some of the, you know, think positive and your emotions are, you know, the, the root of stress. And I'd ha heard of all that stuff, but I was like, you know, there's no way, like, there's no way that I can think my way out of this. And I, you know, I just, I couldn't see how they were connected. And, um, and I just remember thinking, oh yeah, like all that emotional woo-woo stuff, like I will deal with that when I get better. I just don't have time for that right now because I've got to fix all this stuff that's happening. And, you know, famous last words, long story short, I suffered and suffered for a very long time. And, um, my friend, a friend of mine from college reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing this energy work now. It's called the emotion code. And I need a few people to work on while I get certified, you know, and would you guys be open to it? And I was like, whatever, you know, like, I don't get it. It sounds super weird. You know, I don't know how you're going to do this for me. And especially at a distance, I don't know how you're going to do this for me. But I was like, I don't care. Like, we're miserable. So do whatever you want. And it was, you know, the word life changing is um, it's it can't even describe how life changing this was. It was the change that happened in my body uh, was so drastic. And in my body, my for my son, all of us, as we started to release this emotional trauma and this emotional stress and by trauma, I don't mean like I didn't have a traumatic childhood. I have a good marriage like there wasn't anything what uh, what people would think of as a traumatic thing that happened to me and this is true for most of my clients but everyday stress everyday things you know being a mom having a kid with the special needs you know all having health issues these are these are really traumatic emotional things that happen to us and we don't really give it the, that kind of credit releasing all of this stuff started to change my body chemistry. And I started to get out of stress mode and I started to actually feel better for the first time in years. And it was like, everything started clicking for me, you know, like all this healthy food that I was shoving down my throat was finally felt like it was doing something. Um, it was just amazing. And you know, I, so we kind of, we did this for a while, you know, I worked and I did all this emotional healing and, and I got to this point where I felt like I was about 75% of the way back. I was almost there. I felt a lot better, but not a hundred percent. I still had that Hashimoto's diagnosis on my blood work and I knew there was something left. There was just this like little piece that I needed to figure out. And this day, this one day completely changed my life. And I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was sitting out on the back porch and, you know, it was, this, it was like now this beautiful spring day. And I, you know, it was this, that invigorating feeling of finally being able to get outside after a long winter. And we were outside and my husband was starting to dig up the garden and my kids were playing. And I was sitting there on the back porch and I was probably reading a diet book or something, you know, like completely missing out on this beautiful day, just engulfed in trying to figure out the last piece to the puzzle, you know, trying to figure out what food do I need to cut out next. And I had this moment where I was sitting there thinking, what is wrong with me? Like, why can't I just get this? And it was like a lightning bolt hit me. And I realized the reason why I wasn't better was because I believed that there was something wrong with me. And because I believed that there was something wrong with me, then there was always going to be something wrong with me. Yes. And it just hit me and it was like, oh my gosh, that's it. I think that I'm broken. I think that I'm sick. I'm acting and living and breathing like a sick person still. Mm -hmm. And so that day I made this decision that I wasn't sick anymore. And I decided that I was going to just start thriving and I was going to be in joy and I was going to be healthy and I was going to have energy again. And I started eating, thinking, breathing, living like a healthy person, like somebody who has nothing wrong with them. And within three months, my autoimmune diagnosis was gone. So the power of emotional healing and a positive mindset 
can completely radically transform every aspect of your entire life. (laughs) And I I, I put it off for so long. (laughs) That's awesome. But you know, it's wonderful. Now having perspective, you can see that life gave you this beautiful lesson to learn and you wouldn't have appreciated this lesson if you hadn't learned it in in, in the, this order <laughs> you had to right. make yeah. you had to it's sort of like where are my keys they're always going to be in the last place you look <laughs> right exactly what you, find them, you stop looking right so you had exactly. to go through years of you know like you feel like you've you've uncovered every stone you've gone to every doctor you've tried every diet <laughs> you've tried every supplement and and then and then finally it, it clicked that that the one stone left unturned was you needed to uh, start living as though you're healthy. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, the mind body connection. I mean, there's so much science to prove that it exists. But if you you could sit here and and or we we could our listeners could do this. We could sit here and we could trigger stress mode right now, which is the autonomic mm-hmm. nervous system. We cannot consciously tell our heart to beat like thank god right like we don't have to think right. about beating our heart but we could um we could lower our heart rate or increase our heart rate by by through our mind by focusing on for example we could sit here and really stress ourselves out like imagine that all your bills are late or imagine they're you know repoing your car or just like imagine these really bad things mm-hmm. like i'm getting like a stu- not in my stomach just thinking i would think imagine really bad things and you will notice that your breath, uh, you know, short, it gets gets shallower and maybe quicker. Mm-hmm. Your heart rate increases. Now your adrenaline and your your cortisol, your stress hormones are on the rise. And then that cascade, that domino effect, is now affecting your digestion. The body is shunting blood away from your di- digestion to your extremities, so you can run away from the 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 thing you're afraid of. And it's all <laughs> in your head, but your body responds to what we think, right? And so exactly, it's, it's amazing how. When you, we need to start the healing from the mind, from the, it's like from the top down, right? (laughs) Yeah. But so many of us try to like override it by, okay, I'm going to take another supplement or I'm going to, you know, uh, take, you know, go to another doctor, get another test, take another drug, a prescription drug, and we're treating it from the bottom up. But that, you know, is but but the really is our belief system that is the that is going to be the start of the healing. And so I just have so much respect for what you do as a, as a healer with your clients, because you're helping them. If once we shift the mindset, then everything else can follow. And it doesn't mean shift your mindset and then go to McDonald's. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And I guess I do. I have some clients who are like, all right, well, you know, diet doesn't, I'm like, no, diet still matters. And I, but it's different. You don't put all of your eggs in that basket anymore. And you realize that, you know what, being grateful and having a positive mindset is so important. Um, and I, th- in my, in my case is more important than the food, but the food is important. It is an aspect, but it's not the only aspect. And I think that's where alternative health is falling short is a, everything's wrapped in fear and B, which stresses people out, puts people into stress mode, which creates disease. And then B, everything is focused on diets, uh, cutting out foods, exercise programs, and very few people are talking about the other aspects of health. And, you know, the diet and the exercise, great, it's important. I still eat healthy. It's not like I can just sit around and think happy thoughts and eat Ben and Jerry's all day and feel like a million bucks. Um, but, it, you know, the, the diet is still important, but it is not the key. Um, it's a foundational piece um, that supports everything, but it is not, that is what I found over and over, that it's it's not the base and the only thing out there. <laughs> There's so much more to creating health than what you put in your mouth. Right, right. And, you know, after so many interviews, you know, I've done well over 100 interviews, uh, and in getting so many experts on the show and they'll come on the show and say, this one thing is the key. Yeah. And then you're saying this one thing is this one thing is the key. And another person will say this <laughs> one thing is the key. And the fact is, is that we are bio individuals. And uh-huh. maybe what I'm missing is this one component. And maybe someone uh-huh. else who has Hashimoto's is missing this other component. And it doesn't it doesn't mean that the the component I was missing is less than it, mm-hmm. it just means that like 
the emotional work, maybe not everyone is in is uh, depleted of it, or maybe not everyone's depleted of vitamin C. So you give vitamin C to a bunch of people, and some people respond, some people don't. Doesn't mean vitamin C is is, is useless. It just uh-huh. means that you know, with, with this kind of work, we have to, we don't know if we're really missing out until we try it. Right. So we have to like, Hey, I'm sick and I'm doing a bunch of things, but I'm still sick. Maybe I should go and do some emotional healing and some self care and, you know, learn, uh, some techniques for, for turning off the stress mode and turning on the rest and digest parasympathetic response and you know maybe I should learn more of these and see if it is the key missing key because there's really no blood I can't do a blood test and say oh look you know you're deficient in releasing (laughs) anger and (laughs) you're holding on to too much sadness and oh you're limiting decisions over here like there's no science you know I can't do any science tests right so Mm -hmm. really in order for us to know whether it's going to work for you whether it's the key that's going to take your healing to the next level you have to do it you have to experience it have to try it yeah Mm -hmm. and I I I have done my share of emotional work I've lost both my parents and so I got really proactive I that's why I got into neuro-linguistic programming timeline therapy Mm -hmm. hypnosis and and um, and I you know got lots of great counseling and I just you know so I've I've always been very involved in it and every time I had a breakthrough I was like everyone needs this oh my gosh this is so amazing <laughs> yeah. you know and I'm learning more and more about what you do and you you know the EFT which which again it's like it's so funny I'm I'm so into health stuff but I always come at it from a very skeptical point of view like you have to prove it to me and EFT <laughs> is hilarious it's amazing I've never seen it not work. Yeah. It's, oh, it's amazing. It's yeah. So amazing. And it's like, it's mm-hmm. like, you, you mean I got to like, I'm going to like tap my forehead and feel better, you know? Yeah. I, I was so skeptical, but it's just so amazing. So, well, let's go back because your story, which is just um really beautiful. Let's go back to that moment when um the uh, your, your friend was doing that long distance work with you. Can you mm-hmm. take us back? Was that you now were you like on the phone with her or she just said, OK, I'm going to send you energy and you're just going to feel it like just just break down how it worked for you. Yeah. So emotion code is a little different than Reiki, where Reiki is, you know, where you are sending energy, you know, you're you know, channeling this good energy into the body. Um, emotion code is specifically designed to release trapped emotions in the body. Now, what that means is when we feel an emotion, um, now this emotion could be from two weeks ago or from when you were two years old, um, when we feel an intense emotion, an intense feeling of stress, whatever it is, if we don't process that properly, um, which we can go into of how to actually process emotions, but if you're not processing these emotions properly, it can get stuck in the body. And the, cause the body remembers, just like you said, we don't have to make our heart beat. That's because our subconscious does that. Our subconscious is in charge of making our nails grow, our heart beat, our eyes blink. It's also in charge of uh, a lot of our emotional responses. And it's, our subconscious lives in the past. It's like this big supercomputer that's recorded everything that's ever happened to you and every face you've ever seen, every word you've ever spoken, everything you've ever felt is all recorded. And so if you've got this emotion that has never been really processed or released properly, then the subconscious is going to recall that over and over and over again, and you're going to get triggered over and over and over again. And the same way that you can listen to a song you haven't heard in 20 years, but it immediately brings you back to that moment and you start crying and you know whatever it's that same it's the subconscious the subconscious holds on to these emotional experiences and so that's what the emotion code does is it specifically triggers these negative emotions that we have kind of programmed in our subconscious and releases them and it's very quick. It's very simple. It's very easy. It is much, it is kind of like a EFT um, in the same way that you're identifying and releasing things. Um, but it's a little bit even more hands-off than that. And so when my friend was doing this, 
um, you know, this was really my first introduction to energy work. And um, she was like, I'm just going to, I'm going to sit here all the way. She was across the United States and she sat there in her house. I wasn't on the phone with her. She did muscle testing from a distance and tapped in and found all these emotions that needed to be cleared from my thyroid and from all these different parts of me and released them and sent me an email and said, here's what I did. And, and that was it. There was very little communication. And that's how I work with most of my clients at this point. You know, we usually start with a phone session um, so we can get, get acquainted and they can hear what I'm doing and ask questions. But then it's mostly remote work because um, energy is energy. And it doesn't matter if you're in the same room or if you're on the phone or or not. Um, so it's, it's pretty, you know, again, it's one of those things where I was like, this is so woo-woo, like it's just crazy. But when you are sick and your kid is sick and you've tried everything – you're, you know what, you're just, you just crack open and you just get to a point where it's like, fine, whatever, if it works, I don't care. And that's, that's exactly what happened. I didn't care anymore and it worked. And, um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely a new experience though. <laughs> Do you think you had like any, did you, did you have any belief that it would work? Like, could this be placebo in any way? Or do were you really like skeptical and you're like, yeah, whatever, like, I was at that point, I was very, very neutral. I was, I like was kind of at this place, this rock bottom place where I was like, nothing is going to work. Like we've done everything and nothing has ever helped. So I, how is this going to help? Like, and I, but I was just, I wasn't like total, I was, you know, I was hopeful, like maybe this is it, but I'm not, I'm not getting excited about it. I'm not going to put any eggs in this basket. I'm just, whatever, what, just do your thing. I don't care. And so I wasn't, you know, really excited. Like this is going to be it. Oh my gosh. And, but I wasn't totally closed off to it either. I was just like, well, we'll see what happens, you know? And your son who has autism or he's on the spectrum, um, mm -hmm. what, what level, like if you're comfortable sharing, like, um, yeah. I mean, is he, is he communicative? I mean, can you, mm -hmm. yeah. So he, you know, when he was two, three, four, uh, even into five, he was very, very low functioning. Um, he did not speak. Uh, he spent most of his days screaming and banging his body against the wall. And that was his life. Um, and now he is 11 and you wouldn't even know it. Um, he is in mainstream school along with normal <laughs> neurotypical peers. Um, he's a little quirky at this point, but he communicates, he looks you in the eye, he laughs, um, he plays the drums, he gets good grades. Um, you know, most people don't know that he is on the spectrum, um, and, you know, so we have, we have done a lot <laughs> to, to get him to that point, but he's, um, he went from being very low functioning to very high functioning now. So when your friend was doing the emotional code work with you or on you or across the country, mm -hmm. um, um and, and your son, did you start to notice something shifting? I mean, you, you started to notice shift in yourself and your son. Like, can you just mm -hmm. take us back to to, the, to that that time and and share what what was going yeah. on? What did you notice? I think for you know for both of us, it was pretty immediate shifts. Um, and my clients today still have, you know, it's a pretty immediate shift where even after, you know, minutes after that first session, they're like, Oh my gosh, like I feel like lighter and I can breathe. And so for me, it was, it was the same thing. It was this kind of immediate lifting, like, you know, but I wasn't going to hold my breath. I was like, okay, I feel okay. I feel good. And then it was like, for me personally, my energy level started to increase again, where I went from that adrenal fatigue and the Hashimoto's where it was like, I, for a while there, I literally could not get off the couch. And my life was just happening in front of me and I couldn't participate. And I was just there. I was a body, but I wasn't doing anything. And to be a mom with young kids, it's very hard, <laughs> hard to be in that place. Um, so I think for me, I noticed my energy levels increasing. Um, my negative emotional reactions to things were lessening. I wasn't freaking out about stuff the way that I used to. I wasn't getting overwhelmed in the same way. I didn't feel stressed anymore. Um, and for my son, a lot of the same thing, but for him, it looked differently in the sense that, you know, for, 
for him, he had a lot of these really big meltdowns and he, um, you know, his language was really jumbled. He would have these meltdowns. He would get really triggered. And it was like, we were constantly walking on ice. Like, is something gonna, you know, like mess up and he's going to get freak out and start screaming. And that started to go down. Um, he was, he was becoming more neutral with his emotions. He wasn't having these huge outbursts. His anxiety lowered. He started sleeping better. His language was a lot more clear. Um, all of us, all in, I've got three kids. I've got a husband, all five of us. She was working on all five of us. And we all individually saw some really big changes. You know, my daughter used to have these night terrors and that stopped overnight. And, um, you know, so there's just lots of the, all these little nagging things just started to really unwind very quickly. And so you couldn't say, well, maybe it's because you all changed your diet at the same time or, or you, I mean, oh, there, no. <laughs> there's nothing else you changed in that time that you could have contributed these changes to? No, I mean, we were, we had been doing the diet change, you know, we were, we had done that years before. Um, it had been a long time coming. You know, we were on all the same supplements. We were kind of to a point where I was starting to give up in a sense where I was, if anything, our diet was <laughs> not as good as it could have been. Um, because I was just like, you know what, like I'm stressing myself out and nothing's working. So we had kind of started to introduce some other foods again. And, um, you know, if anything, we were, we were kind of to a point where I was in give up mode and <laughs> was not really making a lot of effort as far as seeing doctors and jumping to he from healer to healer and trying different things. And, you know, I had tried to kind of let go a little bit for a while to just because I was exhausted and I was stressed out and, and so frustrated. So, um, it was very apparent to us that, you know, that was the only thing that we were doing at that point. And so it was very apparent that it was, it was helping. And I, I mean, I know for me, it was, she would work on me and I would, you know, there was these days I'd go through my day and I'd be kind of stressed. And then I checked my, all of a sudden I would feel like so much better. And I'd be like, what happened? And I checked my email and realized she had just worked on me and sent, you know, sent the session results. And I was like, Oh, that's, what, that's what happened. That's why I feel so good. Wow. So what point along this process did you go? This is my, this is my path. This is my purpose. Mm -hmm. I need to, I need to go become an emotional code practitioner. And I, I need to, I need to do this with others. Like at what point did you have an aha moment or can you take us back to that time? Yeah. You know, for me, it was, I got to a point where I knew how beneficial this work was for all five of us. And I wanted to be able to do it myself. I wanted to be able to have, to feel empowered and to be able to handle these emotional issues as they came up, handle stress, heal these things for myself and for my kids without having to use a practitioner. And, um, you know, because for a while there, we were basically, you know, paying a second mortgage over to this woman, you know, which I mean, I would do again in a heartbeat. Um, but it was a huge financial commitment. And I that's was really what drove me to learn how to do it myself. Um, so I bought the book, and I started reading and I started practicing and I just really felt frustrated. I wasn't getting anywhere with it. And I decided to just take the, uh, you know, I wanted to get certified just so I could learn to do it for myself and my kids. And, um, so I took the certification and, um, I started working on us and I started working on some of my family. And then I started working on some of my friends and everybody was like, Oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. You need to do this. And I, I just had, I just realized how much that had impacted our life that I wanted to do something. I, I needed to do this on a bigger scale. I knew how, how helpful this had been for us. And I needed to get it out into the world within my little sphere, my little scope. And so I started my practice and I have never, ever <laughs> lacked for clients. Um, a local amazing doctor, um, Zach Bush, who's the creator of Restore Supplement, he he picked me up while I started working in his office almost immediately, just flooded with patients and have been doing it ever since. Um, but for me in my practice, I really got to that same point where I 
I could sense that same feeling with my clients that I had had with my practitioner where I want them to be empowered. I want them to be able to handle stuff as it comes up. I don't want them to feel like they have to come to me all the time. I want them to have these tools. I want them to learn how to heal themselves because the body is a self-healing mechanism and we just have to have the right tools. And so that's why I... I created Rooted in Health program, which is where I basically teach these people, these my wonderful tribe, all the things that I teach my clients in, you know, in a private one-on-one setting. I give them the tools that I use in my daily life to keep that I use to heal myself and keep myself healthy. And, you know, because I want other people to be empowered. And I just, I know for me going back to that time, it was a huge financial commitment. It was a huge time commitment and I want it to be easier for people. I know how impactful the emotional health healing is and self-care and um, stress relief tools and mindset tools are, um, but I need, I, I just have this desire for it to be easier for people, less of a financial burden. And so that's what I've done is I've just packaged it all up and created this um, program so that people can do it themselves. And I still have some clients who come to me because they like to have that, you know, that support and I'm, I'm there for them, but I, I, I have given them the tools to empower them to do it themselves because it's such an empowering work to feel like you finally have control over how you feel again. And, and that's what I want to share is really the, the impact of this, but that you can do it yourself, that you don't have to have a practitioner. You don't have to have that kind of codependent relationship where somebody else is always fixing you. It's, that's not what it's about. It's about being empowered and stepping into your power. And, um, and so that's what I do now is, is kind of this, this twofold thing. Awesome. Um, the, okay. So when you're working with someone and they can be long distance, um, is there anything that they do, any work that they do? Because I, you know, every time I think of emotional work, since I've been for 11 years now doing NLP and timeline therapy and, and uh, hypnosis and coaching with people, it's like it's it's emotional work. You sit down with your client, mm-hmm. you get on the phone with your client and you, you, you know, work through limiting decisions, negative emotions, you, know, you work through it and they're, mm-hmm. they're actively involved, right? And so, um, and then they're also involved in the the breakthrough, the aha moments as well. And so there's that conscious unconscious integration. And what I'm, and so I'm wondering is, does any part of your work, like, uh, is the, the person, is a participant involved or is this, you know? How, how yeah. How yeah. With the emotion code, the person does not have to be involved, but that's where I feel like, the integration of some of my own tools and some of my own processes that I have created make it kind of give it the edge because for the emotion code, the other person does not have to be involved. And this is, this is the blessing and the curse of the emotion code (laughs) Um, is the blessing is that I've got clients who've been in therapy for 20 years and come to me and say, I cannot talk about this problem anymore. And I'm like, perfect. You don't have to tell me a thing. I don't need to know anything. I don't need to know any detail. It is not talk therapy. We are not talking about this anymore. We are not triggering this anymore. We are just releasing it on the subconscious level. We are taking the flag off of this experience in your subconscious, making it not so important anymore. We're neutralizing it. Mm -hmm. So we do not have to talk about things. It is not it's not talk therapy. Um, I let my clients talk if they want to, because that can be very healing as well, but they don't have to. And a lot of my clients are done talking and they're done talking about all of it and they just want it healed. So, um, so most of my clients are very, um, uninvolved in the process. Um, but, that's where I want them to be more active with changing their mindset, using EFT to, to heal things on a daily basis as they come up. And that's where I created the course to kind of go along. And so now I have clients, you go through the course before you work with me because then they've got this, this, um, 
this really deep understanding of how the body heals and how the body creates disease and how I can be an active participant in that. And then they come to me and I just start releasing things and they get it and we can move forward. So rather than taking up all of their time, teaching them these things in one-on-one sessions, they get all the tools up front because it's very important to be actively involved in your your well-being every day. But I don't have to be the one that does it. They can do it themselves. It's these very simple tools that I teach people and like EFT and 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 different things that um, that will create the perfect environment for creating health. And um, and then once that is taken care of, then I just kind of clean up the residual stuff in the background and and let them move on with their lives. <laughs> Excellent. And for listeners who don't know what EFT is, I had a really great interview, interview 103, uh, in which we talk, actually, um, my guest Dawson Church uh, actually does a, a a technique on air with me. <laughs> and again, I was very, I, I was very skeptical about, e, uh, skeptical about EFT. And then I had a result. <laughs> and I was like, mm-hmm. okay. And then, mm-hmm. and then I had another result. And I'm like, okay, there's something to this. So um, yeah, definitely check out episode 103 for more information about EFT. So I think it's very valuable that someone um, has the, you know, if they're, if they have trauma and it's just like, they're not getting anywhere with therapy. And this is so great because you're obviously getting results with it. So now they don't have to like relive this trauma ever over and over again, trying to go to different therapists. Mm-hmm. And that's wonderful. And on, on another level, I have this, I, I have a belief system or an understanding that, um, the mind the unconscious mind will hold on to a negative experience or hold on to the hold on to the charge of the negative emotion attached to a memory if that is not resolved if the person doesn't Mm -hmm. have a resolution and and part of resolution is gaining the positive learnings or getting an understanding or clarity or gaining a new perspective so that they can finally let it go when Mm -hmm. you do this technique do people gain a resolution like an understanding or gain lessons from the past so that they can let it go or is it is it is it almost like you're 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 praying for them in a sense um prayer yeah you know it's i think all energy work all healing i don't care if it comes from food or emotional work it's all in a sense a form of prayer to me um because i do believe there is this higher power that is involved in the work that i do and so all of my clients have had very different experiences um, but they all come back and say I feel better. I feel less triggered. I feel clear. I feel light. I feel I, you know, I've got this inspiration that I haven't had. Um, they're able to touch in with their intuition again. You know, it's, um, it, it's, and it, it is, you know, I think for people, especially with the clients I work with, these are all people that are very educated when it comes to alternative health. Like these are not people that are just like, they just drove through McDonald's and now they're getting on the phone with their energy healer. Like these are people (laughs) that they get it already, you know, they've done all of that. And so they are really, they're already really actively participating in their health. And so I don't have to do a lot of education when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, But, you know, like they already have the resolve, like they already know what they want. They know, I want to create a business. I want to be a better mom. I, I, I want to be healthy. I just want to be happy again. I want, they've got these, these dreams and these goals and they're feeling blocked and they're just hitting a wall. Like they keep hitting this invisible wall. And so when they come to me, I just pull those bricks off. I just start taking the wall down and they, they run like, Mm. and that's where I, you know, I, I tell my clients up front, I, this is not a lifelong process. Like I don't, (laughs) no offense, but I don't want you to be my client for very long because if you are, I'm not doing my job right. Mm -hmm. And because I want them to come in, clear all this stuff out and move on because they all, all of them have these amazing things that they're ready to do and they're just hitting this wall. And so I pull the wall down and then they just go and they're ready and they've, they're able to take these experiences and transform them. And, you know, I mean, that was my story. It was like, I struggled so much and for so long and all of a sudden it just shifted so fast. And I look back and I think, oh my gosh, like if I hadn't been there, 
you know, if I, all of this experience, all of these things have given me such an incredible experience to turn around and to help heal others. And that's what my clients are doing as well. And it's, it's so rewarding to see, they just go, they just run with it because they're, they're ready. They know what they want and they just, they're just blocked. And so I help, I help unblock them. (laughs) So you've got, so you can work with someone uh, or they can take your training and learn how to do it to themselves, which, you know, I, I can see, I can see why you're so excited about, about your training program, because I'd love to, I love giving people tools. I love, I love teaching mm-hmm. them how to do it. And so they can like, you know, five years from now, if they come up, come up against something, they've got the tools and they can, they can work through it and, and, uh, and then, and then move on. So you're helping, mm-hmm. you're empowering people. So, mm-hmm. so what does it look like to do this course? Like they're going to learn emotional code. Is it, is it like they're learning everything you learned as an, to, to become emotional code practitioner? It's not because emotion code is not my modality. That's, you know, that's what I'm, I'm certified in and that's what I practice in my private practice, but I, it is not mine to teach. So the course is they are getting the foundation for understanding how the body creates health and how the body creates disease. And we learn about the root system and about the difference between a symptom and and, an, and the actual problem. Because a lot of times the symptom that you're having, if it's a headache or if it's anxiety or hip pain or cancer or runny nose, whatever it is, that's just a branch of a tree. It's not the root. It's just how it looks on the outside. It's how the body's manifesting it. And so that's why I always uh, refer to the body like a tree. And so all the symptoms that we have are, are a branch on this tree. And what we do in the course is we go to the root system. Rather, we, we put the symptoms aside, whatever they may be. And I know how hard these symptoms can be for people because I've been there. I get it. But we put all that aside and we stop worrying about the headache for just a few minutes and we go down to the root system and we clear out the diseased roots and we do that and we we just make this environment perfect for this this tree to thrive and so for the body to thrive so we go through a lot of its education we talk about stress mode and thrive mode and and how you know again how the body creates a symptom of either, you know, because we can have a, a positive symptom, you know, joy and health are symptoms too. It's just what's going on, what's going on at the root to create that. So we talk about that, you know, we talk about um, self-care and by self-care, I don't mean, you know, like taking a long bubble bath and, you know, I mean, granted, if that's your thing, great, but, you know, people kind of have this misconception of self-care and either they think, well, it's got to be this, you know, three-day retreat somewhere or this luxurious (laughs) bubble bath and, like, I can't do that, so I might as well just eat junk food and watch Netflix and that'll be, you know, my self-care. And so we we really bust through some of the the myths around self-care and what it actually is, um, what authentic self-care is. You know, we talk about emotional healing. We have stress relief tools. We talk about how to heal negative self-talk, which is really the core of where our mindset comes from and where our emotions come from. And then that creates everything that creates that whole biochemistry shift in the body to either be stressed or to thrive. So we heal negative self-talk. I have, um, a modality script, the rooted in health modality script, which is kind of like a a hacked EFT script that heals any past negative emotion. Um, anything that's happening in your life, we heal, we heal the root of that. We can do that in about two minutes. And so that's in there. Um, and tons of tools, you know, tons of just simple daily things to help you (laughs) create radiant health have effortless joy and lasting energy and um, just helping people realize how easy that is. Um, Because I know for me, it was, it seemed like such a a huge feat (laughs) when I was trying everything and nothing was working and it just felt like it was so out of reach and it's really not. And that's what I want to empower people to do all of this for themselves, create it for themselves so they can get on with their life. So you can get on with just being an active participant in your life instead of standing on the sidelines and just, you know, waiting for something to shift. <laughs> cool. Is there anything that you can do on air? Like, can you, can you do emotional code? Or can you do one of your techniques on me or, uh, right here right now, or, you know, is there something that you can do or teach us that maybe the listeners can do? 
Yeah, I mean, I could do some emotion code. Um, it would just be for you, so it wouldn't particularly benefit the audience. But, um, you know, and you might not feel anything right away. It's it's not like an instantaneous type of thing. But I could do that. I can also just give some tools that everybody could use. Um, let's do both. Let, let's, yeah, do, some, okay. do something to me. And then, and, okay. then, and then let's teach the audience <laughs> something. And then, um, okay. and then if I... If I feel anything, I'll let, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so again, we haven't like, I don't really know what's going on with you. If you have anything going on right now or any triggers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, kind of what I'm going to do. I, I do muscle testing and that's how I get all my answers. Um, so I have a chart in front of me. It's the emotion code chart. You can Google it and it'll pull right up for you. Um, and it's, there's columns and rows and I use muscle testing to identify what emotion we need to release. Um, so what I'm going to do since, you know, I don't have any thing specific that we're working on is I'm just going to ask what is the most important thing that we need to clear right now for your ultimate well being, Um, and that will kind of give us great give us a really good idea of what we need to clear so let me just this is great because yeah while you're doing it i'll talk so megan doesn't like we just met today i mean she's listened to the podcast like one episode or so and that's about it that's all she knows about me so this is going to be great because you don't megan doesn't really know about my personal life other than you know i'm really passionate about helping people gain health naturally um, so it'll be fun to what you what you discover. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. So as I'm just kind of tuning in here real quick, um, and we can clear a few things. The first thing that's coming up is the most important thing to clear is grief. Um, and grief in Chinese medicine is held in either the lungs or the colon. So a lot of times, you know, people will, uh, clients will come to me and I'll look at their symptoms and specifically see where they're at in the body. And that gives me a clue as to what's going on. So if this person has a lot of anger triggers, then I'm going to go look at the liver because that's where um, anger is stored, is in the liver. And so if we've got somebody who is dealing with a lot of grief, a lot of times that will go to the lungs. So that will manifest as you know, I mean, there's a huge spectrum there, a cough, congestion, to all the way to lung cancer, you know, depending on the severity of the emotional trauma. So grief, it can be in the colon too, um, but most of the time grief goes to the lungs. So we'll just clear that one. I'm just going to clear it out. We don't have to psychoanalyze it. We don't have to know when you felt that way or why. We're well, just going to clear it. I can definitely d let you know that um my uh, my neighbor was just murdered a few weeks ago and i'm i am still oh my gosh. i am still grieving about it <laughs> you, mm. you you mm. said grief and i just burst into tears so oh um, my gosh yeah, so you, you were right on right all there. right <laughs> okay so we do know all right so let's just release that <sighs> okay let me see let's find another one um Okay, so the next one coming up is the emotion of longing. So this is wanting for something. It can be a wanting for anything. Um, but what's interesting about this one is what comes up is this is not your emotion originally. Now you're holding it. It's in your body and, and it, it is triggering you. But this emotion um, originated with someone else. This is an absorbed emotion. So the same way that we you know, your loved one can come to you and be really happy about something and really excited. And then you start to feel really happy too, You're or they can come out. <laughs> You're freaking <laughs> me out. <laughs> like, seriously. I, uh, um, so like the, I know exactly what it is. Um, oh, it's nice. my, yeah, no, it's my husband's longing and, okay. and it's, it's all about, um, be, I mean, being, being successful and wanting, you know, this is this podcast, for example, is our startup. And, you know, it's, 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 he's mm -hmm. really, really, really wants us to be successful and wants us to get to the, because now that we have a son, I mean, it's just like, it's a daily yeah. conversation for, for us to, um, to, to want to, 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 to make this into something that's going to be a legacy for, for our son and, 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 you know, support mm -hmm. us. So, you know, cause we're entrepreneurs, right? So, so yep. we, um, yeah, it's totally, that's totally it. My, it's my, my every day it's a conversation with my husband and his like longing to really build something. Mm -hmm. And then, and that's not, that's not my personality. You know, my thing is like go with the flow and things are just going to like mm -hmm. happen. And I don't have like, that's not normally my, 
my mm-hmm. uh, mode of operation and I've totally taken that on like a stress like I'm stressed out like I want to make it successful for him you know what I mean yeah yeah so yeah that totally makes sense so basically that's what it is you know most of the emotions that come up are going to be your own but every once in a while you know we we absorb things from other people and then we hold on to it like it's our own you know and we do this in childhood for sure you know like our parents are feeling something or they believe something and then we pick it up because that's just what mm. kids do they absorb things so um so yeah let's clear this I'll go ahead and clear this from you and you know what we're just going to throw your husband in the mix too and maybe um He's release be him so happy. yeah <laughs> <laughs> see how he does after this <laughs> Yeah. So let's, um, so that's clear. Let me find one more here. I don't know if like, I'm, I'm always like the skeptical part of me, like maybe clear my skepticism. Cause I'm sitting here going like, <laughs> I feel really good right now. And I don't know if it's because I'm totally like, like just, um, mm-hmm. placebo effect, but I'm, I kind of feel like lighter. That's ex- I mean, that's the word that everybody always says is that first session, they come back and they say, I feel lighter. And, and sometimes it's even on a physical level, like I can breathe, like I can put my shoulders back. I can, and it's this, oh, it's the exhale. And you don't realize how much you're holding on to until you let it go. And then it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, my chest, then, my chest feels lighter and my face kind of got tingly, like hot, like tingly. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I can definitely feel it in my chest. And I'm immediately going like, can I like, can, can now, I mean, I, okay. So with Reiki, cause I know you do Reiki and um, I also do Reiki and I, you know, with, with Reiki level two, you learn long, long distance Reiki. And the first rule is you have to get their permission, you know, uh-huh. cause what if someone doesn't want it? You know what I mean? Like no, uh-huh. no unwanted healing. Like don't go heal people that don't want it. Cause we respect right. people's boundaries. Um, although you can pray for whoever you want, it's just like, you right. Know, wh- right. Whether they're right. going to receive it, whether they want to receive it or not, you get to pray for them. But cause there's, I guess just, there's different laws of, apply to prayer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. but, but so when it comes to this, like, could I hire you to go help the, the son of the woman who was murdered? Cause he's grieving like, but he doesn't know it. I'm like, can I hire you to go work on him? And he doesn't know it. Or is this something that the person really should be involved no, the person, if the, if the person is under 18 and in your care, so your child, I can work on your child without their permission. Um, but anybody that's over 18 and not in your care, it has to come from them. Um, I, I can't, you know, just like look out the window and see somebody walking down the road and be like, oh, I'm just going to clear some stuff them. for them. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it looks like they're holding some grief in their colon there. <laughs> like, I'm going to try to release it. Um, no, so it's, you know, they have to be involved. Um, but, and, husbands- and, you know, I husbands count uh, as um as uh, husband. <laughs> people in, in our care a, it's up for up for discussion but um <laughs> yeah Maybe I'll just, yeah. Um, you know, it, a lot of times I do have some clients who, you know, their husbands like will give me the okay, but I really don't even communicate with them. I usually communicate with the wife and, and, but as long as I have the okay, um, you know, then it's, then it's okay. But yeah, yeah most of, we need to, we need to have permission. So, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, okay. Freak me out again. Let's do the next one. Okay. So let's see. Most important thing. Um, All right. So sadness. So that's, again, same thing, lung or colon, um, probably just another aspect of the grief there that just needs to be released. So we'll release that one. All right. This is a good one. So self-abuse. Um, this is one that comes up a lot for my female clients. Very big spectrum of what self-abuse can be. Um, you know, obviously on one end of the spectrum, you're looking at things like, you know, hurting yourself in different ways. But on the other end of the spectrum, this is negative self-talk. This is... Um, not taking care of yourself. And if that is physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever way, it's just, and maybe this is current, maybe this is past, but at some point, you know, not taking care of yourself or not mm-hmm. speaking to yourself in a loving, compassionate way. And that can get stuck in the body and mm-hmm. get triggered. So let's release that one. That was totally. a big one. It's oh mm-hmm. yeah, huge. It was like, I, I, I could not believe how abusive I was to myself. And then mm-hmm. one of my earlier interviews, um, w- with, uh, Steven Flansbaum, who's a licensed mental health counselor, very good episode. I'm forgetting. I think it was like in around the twenties or the thirties, like really early on in the, ep- in the podcast, 
he said, if we looked at the relationship we have with ourselves as though we're a couple, right? Like the, the, how mm-hmm. you talk to yourself, if how you talk to yourself would be like how you talk to uh-huh. people, we would have to call the cops like on ourselves. That's how mm-hmm. abusive we are. We're so abusive to ourselves. And when he said that my jaw hit the floor and I had like this, oh my gosh, I yep. can't believe because we really do bet ourselves up. And absolutely, um, I have I've, I spent years, years um, mm-hmm. really abusing myself. And I still catch my I've got, always got to catch myself and go, you know, like, OK, let's be let's be loving. <laughs> well, you know what? And this that's actually a really good segue into one of the tools that I teach in Rooted in Health of, of how to heal the negative self-talk is. I tell people, you know, what you can do is grab a notebook or open a, start a new note on your phone and start writing down everything that you say to yourself over the, over a couple of days, anything negative. Um, and uh, some of this stuff is so natural. It comes so easy to us that we don't even realize that we're doing it, but you're going to start, you know, as you are become aware of it and you start writing this down, all of a sudden this thought's going to come into your head and you'll be like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just thought that about myself. And it's all the stuff that we say, I'm fat, I'm ugly. Oh, this isn't good enough. Or, uh, you know, what's wrong with me? And why did I say that? All this stuff, all this negative stuff that we, we, um, unfortunately naturally just tell ourselves all the time, wherever it came from, it doesn't matter if, you know, it came from your parents or a movie or a magazine or society or whatever. It's, it's still what's going through your head. It's your mind chatter. So start writing down your mind chatter, give yourself a couple of days, no judgment. Don't judge it. Just see it for what it is. And then sit down and look at that list and imagine a child that you love. And imagine saying those things out loud to this child mm-hmm. that you love. Would that child be um, happy and engaged and healthy and joyful and empowered and confident? Or would that little child be anxious and depressed and sick and insecure? And, you know, and you, it's so obvious that this child would not thrive if they heard all of this stuff every single day. Mm-hmm. This child would be sickly. This child would have no confidence. And, you know, before long, this poor kid wouldn't want to get out of bed. And so then we wonder, we look back at ourselves and we wonder, well, why can't I get out of bed? Why do I feel like crap? Why, why can't I just like go out and start my business that I want to start or why, you know, and that's why, because the things that we're saying to ourselves. And so, you know, so then what I want you to do with that list after you've, you know, take it and look in the mirror and apologize to yourself, like really be real with it. And just like, I'm sorry, this is not true and forgive yourself for doing it and then go burn the dang list, like get rid of it. And then start writing down things that you do like about yourself or that you are grateful for. And sometimes this is really hard for people because it's very uncomfortable to like yourself. And we've been kind of taught that like to not like yourself for whatever reason, you know, you've got to look a certain way or talk a certain way or you've got to clothes or you got to move into the different house or your kids need to behave or whatever. There's always these stipulations we put around. Well, once this happens, then I can like myself or then I can be happy. Oh, well, look but- back to high school. Like, I mean, I, oh, can, yeah. I can only yeah. speak for the experience of being a woman. I don't, I, I can only imagine what it was like being a boy going through high school, but as a woman, right? It's like day one, uh, I got to wear the cool clothing. Am I going to get, you know, mm-hmm. do I get to wear the latest makeup? Um, I got to be into the right, mm-hmm. right music. You know, I got to fit in. What if they don't like me? You know what I mean? So it's, it was always about pleasing others. And there was, it was, there's so little focus in high, like high school, for example, because it was like, it's like one of those, it's kind of that weird moment where we really feel like we're adults, like inside, we feel like we're adults, but we're like living, <laughs> We're, 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 we're like so naive and we don't mm-hmm. have the life skills. And so we're really like like these child adults and, um, yep. and and we're finally given a little bit of freedom. And now we've got to prove ourselves and and stand on our own two feet. But the first the first thing we do when we stand on our own two feet is people please and try yep. to be accepted and be part of the the group. And um, oh, man, kids are so mean. And just I the know things, and their parents hold us to these impossible standards or the teachers do or, you know, our friends do. And then media does. You look at all the magazines like. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we all need to be 90 pounds and wearing, you know, $500 clothing and, and yep. everyone's got to own a car and how to get your driver's license and get perfect grades and, you know, get into like the best school. And so you're just putting all these giant, you know, things in front of you 
And, uh, and then, and then yep. when you don't reach it, like you don't get the A or you don't get into that university or you don't get the boy or the girl to like you, or you don't get the friends, then you're beating yourself up. Oh, it's because I'm bad and wrong. And look, I'm ugly. Yep. And I'm stupid. And, and then, you know, and, and we wonder why we all have these, these issues. We're all we, yeah. around with all this baggage. Yep. Right. We wonder why we don't feel good. And, and then, you know, we grow up with that and then that translates into health. And then we, we start reading these books and we hear all these diet gurus talking about like, well, if you just cut out gluten, like everything is your whole life is going to change and everything's going to be better. And when that doesn't happen, same thing, you start to think something must be wrong yes. with me, like not working, Ooh. like, I, you know, and so, you know, that's where. So if you can start making this list and being aware of what kind of chatter is going through your mind on a day-to-day -day basis, and then literally go in front of the mirror, like breathe, look at this list, put your hand on your heart and out loud say, then this is a script, like a, a script that I use for my clients and what I teach in Rooted in Health is, I'm sorry, this is not who you are. I now release all of these negative thoughts, repressed emotions, and cellular patterns from my body, mind, and spirit. I forgive you. I love you. And say that and then throw out the list and start a new journal. And whatever it is, I don't care if you have to start with saying, I'm grateful that I have my vision. I am I love that I, I have ears and I can hear. I love that... Um, you know, I, I have a roof over my head, like wherever you have to start, just start there and start focusing on the positive, start realizing all the amazing blessings you already have. And that starts to change things. Again, all we're doing is we've just got to get out of stress mode. We've just got to get out of feeling stressed and start thriving. And the way we do that is we can start in our head. We can start with the things that we are thinking and saying to ourselves on a daily basis and change that the, you know, people say, oh, like a gratitude journal and like, and like, that sounds like there, that's not enough. Like, there's no way that I can be sick and miserable. And like, I'm going to start a gratitude journal and that's going to be enough. But sometimes it is. You have and to sometimes focus. You, ha yes. you have to start somewhere. And it really is these small tools that create and compound over time that create a body that has radiant health and effortless joy and lasting energy. It is these small tools. It's these daily things that we do to keep our body in thriving rather than in stress. And over time, all these negative self-talk and all these negative emotions and all this built up stress, for me, it compounded into an autoimmune disease. And then same thing, I had to unpack it and I had to compound it in a different way. If I wanted to create health and thriving energy and all that stuff, I had to start doing other things. And that's where, yeah, the gratitude journal, like it does make a difference and, and realizing the power that, you know, our minds and our emotions and our stress levels have on our health is so key. Um, you know, and, and again, it is, it's, that was the key for me. It's a key for a lot of my clients. And for some people, it's going to be diet and other people, it's going to be exercise and that's all great. But I think coming at it from a very holistic point of view, that, you know, if, if you are doing the diet and you are doing the exercise and you're taking your supplements and you still feel like crap, start exploring the emotional side of things, start exploring your stress levels, start exploring the way you talk to yourself, that it might be that part that you need. And, you know, it's, we have all of these different aspects, these different pillars of health and without one of them, the whole thing isn't going to work. And so the emotional aspect is huge. And, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny. You know, I just you you just triggered a memory for me a few months ago. Um, so I've been really into obviously holistic medicine and coaching people. And I know tons about supplements and diet and that kind of thing. And one of my best friends called me up and she's like, she, and she is is doubly into everything I'm into. She's like into it twice as much and been doing it for twice as long. And she's really, really uh, super healthy and looks super healthy. And she goes, you know, I'm just, uh, I can't concentrate. I have low energy. And I know she's already not eating anything. Like I already know she's only eating the uh -huh. healthiest foods in the world. Uh -huh. there's, there's nothing, there's nothing she's doing wrong. Like I just know it. Uh -huh. And I said to her, and it just, it hit me. It just intuitively, I said to her, is this has nothing to do with your supplements, your diet or, or when you wake <laughs> up in the morning, are you, are you starting your day with doing something you love? Like, are you starting your day 
you know, uh-huh. listening. She loves like Christian music and she loves dancing and she loves reading her Bible, uh, reading her Bible and she loves uh, praying. And I'm like, do you start, you like wake up in the morning and spend the first hour of your day doing what you love? Like, are you dancing to Christian music and praying and reading the, and worshiping? And she's like, oh, no, I'm not doing that anymore. And I said, well, yeah, you go? I said, you know, I just got this uh, like intuitive hit that she was just, she was just getting up and going to work and she just gotten that, um, that hamster wheel routine of get up, yep. go to work, eat, go to sleep, get up, go to work, eat, go to sleep, and maybe get some exercise in and not live and not do the Itch. things that she's most passionate about. And she goes, uh, and it was, and, and she was really ready for me to tell her to like eat more broccoli. Like she was really ready to hear <laughs> that, oh, um, she's just missing bone broth or she's just right. missing like some more <laughs> digestive enzymes. And it was so, it was so great. I was like, I was so I was so thrilled that I could help her with that um, because she, it's funny that she probably already knew the answer and sometimes we just have to uh-huh. have it be reflected back at us. But but doing something that fills your soul that f- that fills you with joy that makes you feel like you're living your purpose that makes you feel like you're not just on that hamster wheel is so is so important. And I love your your guidance to us to take out that list of all the negative self talk and 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 tell yourself you're sorry. And mm-hmm. and and you know, heal that relationship you have with yourself and start. And another reason why I think sitting down with the gratitude journal is really important after you have asked yourself for forgiveness and apologized to yourself. I think it's important yeah. to do the gratitude journal because um, it begins to establish trust again with yourself. If you think about it, we've really, we keep lying to ourselves, like, oh, I'll go to the gym tomorrow, or oh, um, mm-hmm. I'm only gonna eat one cookie, or, you know, we just, we keep mm-hmm. lying to ourselves. It's like, oh, I'll go to bed at 10, and then we go to bed at one in the morning. Um, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll wake up, I have to, you, know, you wake up and the alarm wakes you up and you really feel exhausted and crappy, and then you lie to yourself and you say, oh, I'll go to bed early tonight to catch up on sleep, right? You just, we, yep. keep, we yeah. keep lying to our body and lying to ourselves, and we think that's okay. Okay, but if we did that to someone else, they would have like left us by now, you know? And right. So, and exactly. So the mm-hmm. gratitude journal is part of healing the relationship we have with ourselves because it's like, you know what? I'm going to talk nice to you from now on. And we're going to start by talking about what I love about you, which is yourself, right? Because you're talking to yourself. Right. What I love about you right. and what I love about my body and what I love about my life and what I love about the people I've surrounded myself with and what I love about my job. And that also begins to establish, re- reestablish that trust and any kind of activity we can do to reestablish trust with ourselves like don't stop lying to ourselves like if you know you're not going to the gym tell yourself you know what I'm not going to the gym and I know it and you know maybe <laughs> I'm going to recommit but don't like it's just like the, the lying to ourselves it just that's an that starts to deteriorate that's part of the self-talk you know and then we don't trust mm-hmm. ourselves and then when we get on that healing diet or something then we go well this isn't going to work because I'm going to give up anyway because look I've I really have no trust in myself because I keep lying to myself right. so right Right. I love. Yeah. And, you know, and that's where I like I tell people the intentional joy, you know, like your friend, like doing something every day intentional that creates joy in your life. And that is different for everybody. And if that's dancing to music or calling a friend or watching a funny show or going for a walk in nature or taking that bubble bath or, you know, I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter. It's so individual. But that is self care. It's not, you know, like, what this stuff we have in our mind, like it's, it doesn't have to be this huge extravagant thing. And also sitting on on the couch and watching TV and eating ice cream is not self-care either. And I think there's a really big misconception and that's where being authentic with that and creating joy in your everyday life. That is the kind of stuff that, that starts to shift your life. And that's what makes you happy again. And when you're happy, health starts to to thrive in your body. And, you know, so it's this beautiful trickle effect of like, you know, how can you say that like going for a walk is going to completely change my health, but over time it is, it's going to completely change your health. If that brings you joy, that's going to bring you health. And so it's about creating joy intentional joy every single day. And it doesn't matter what it is. And it can take five minutes or two minutes or whatever, putting on some good music when you're driving or whatever, but just being intentional about it and doing the things that bring that light and that joy into your life will bring that light and joy into your body. And then you're going to feel better. And that's what it's all about is just feeling better. Mm, that's awesome. Super exciting. Before we move on to, I do have, I have a few more questions for you. Uh, is there anything you needed to wrap up around the doing the emotional code work with me? Or is there anything else you wanted to do around that? 
No, I mean, that's it. You know, that's what I do for clients. You know, we awesome. usually clear anywhere from, you know, 15 to 20 emotions in a session. There's a lot more that I do <clears throat> besides just that. Um, I use the muscle testing to create um, healing food lists for people, figuring out what supplements they need, if they need herbs, if they need, you know, whatever. There's lots of things we can clear. We can clear toxins and misalignments and pathogens and all sorts of stuff. Um, that's just the emotional part. So, Very um, cool. And totally totally surreal. Yeah. Like just, you know, that, that little sci science person mind, like the little part of me that's like only things you can see and measure and, you know, like that, that little part of me is like freaking out and going, how can this work? Right. And then, but I'm, I, I feel different and I, I don't know. It's like, you know what? I don't, it's like, then there's this other voice that tells that voice, like, Hey, it doesn't matter if it's placebo. Cause it worked. Right. Like it's like right. the, the person with cancer that takes the sugar pill and all of a sudden doesn't have cancer. I'm like, it doesn't matter. All right. It works. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They don't have cancer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, it works. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. So, and you've got, so you have some more things that we were going to um, uh, teach the audience. Cause I want, I mean, you're such a wealth of knowledge. What's this Zen in 10? So Zen in 10 is another technique um, that I teach in, in Rooted in Health, one of many. But um, Zen in, in 10 is a, you know, again, one of these really simple things that we think, oh, well, there's no way, you know, that can help. But same thing, we can clear three emotions and all of a sudden you feel better. But there is a way and it does help. And so Zen in 10 is a technique that I basically created out of necessity for my oldest son, uh, my son on the spectrum. So, you know, he has he has these really big emotions and, and I do too, to be honest. And so what we started doing was implementing these 10 minute breaks into his day to prevent his evening meltdowns. And it was like a miracle worker. And so I started doing it for myself and I started feeling better. And then I introduced this technique to my clients and my clients started feeling better. And 10 minutes is really all you need to start creating the life you desire. And so again, this is kind of like a self-care technique. Um, but what you do is you turn everything off for 10 minutes and you relax and it's turn off your phone, close your computer. You know, you can put some music on if you want to, but re sit down and relax for 10 minutes. And I know that sounds so ridiculous. Like, could, could I, could that be any more simple? But <laughs> the point is, is that nobody is doing this. Nobody. And it's the We get into this routine of get up eat your breakfast, go to work, work all day, come home, crash, turn on the TV to, to numb yourself out, go to bed and do it again. And nobody is taking the time to rejuvenate themselves mm -hmm. or to relax or to feel joy. So it's kind of this same thing. It rolls into kind of that intentional joy. This is intentional relaxation. We're intentionally spending 10 minutes a day getting out of stress mode and into thrive mode. And over time, that's going to compound and that it's going to create health. And so there's no fancy meditation techniques. There's nothing you have to do. You don't need anything. You don't need workout clothes. Like you don't need anything. All you need is to be able to turn everything off for a minute and lay down, sit down. I don't care. But this is just like we do for our little kids. We do quiet time for our little kids. So so that they don't have their meltdowns, we're doing the same thing and we're having quiet time. And so this way we are giving ourselves this release valve during the day to intentionally stop what you're doing, release any built up stress, and then you can move on. And what I've noticed is people who implement this Usually after lunch is a great time to do it, but people can do it anytime. Um, if I'm having going through something, I'll do this several times a day and that's fine. Um, but what this does, what I notice is this is going to prevent evening binging. Um, if you're an emotional eater, this is going to prevent that by releasing the stress and emotions that are have built up during your day that you try to numb out at night with food. Um, it's going to prevent that, those evening fatigues. Like, so you're going to have better energy all all throughout the afternoon into the evening. Um, and I know it sounds so funny to think to take a 10 minute break. That's, that's, that's the tool, but 
it's amazing what this can do for people, you know, and I have some people like to add in, you know, meditation music or a, an essential oil or a flower remedy or a mantra. And you can do all that stuff if you want, but you don't have to. Um, it's just, you know, get your kids involved, get your coworkers involved, you know, make it a thing. And it's, Zen and 10. And you just, you turn off, you get cozy, you rest for a minute. You're giving your body permission to slow down, to relax, to turn off that fight or flight response, to release the built up negative emotions from the day. And that is exactly what you need for radiant health. So you're giving yourself those 10 minutes to do that every single day. I love it. I love it. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, can I go for a walk? Can I read a book? But it's the, no, the purpose is to not do mm -hmm. anything. No books. Yep. No books. Yeah. We got to turn our mind off. That's the whole point is our mind is constantly going. So sometimes, you know, a walk in nature is definitely a great thing if you're not distracted. Um, you know, if you do live out in the, I live out in the country, so I can go outside and walk and there's no people, there's no cars, there's nothing around. And it's just me and the trees. And it, it's, it is definitely a Zen and 10 for me, but if you're out and you get distracted and there's people and cars honking and that's not really relaxing. And so, um, it's really just about turning off and just getting back into your body, getting grounded, getting centered, and then you can come back to your day refreshed and feeling better. And again, that's, you know, exactly what we need to do to create health. I love it. It's so wonderful. You're such a wealth of information. Um, this is fantastic. So your website, which is harmony-restored.com and, and all the links that everything that Megan does is going to be in the show notes of today's podcast. Before we wrap it up, um, is explain to the listeners, uh, if they, because I, I have a feeling that there's going to be a lineup of my listeners wanting to, uh, talk to you about, uh, working with them. Uh, so you have, you have this individual sessions, but you really, really want people to do your online course because you really want to give them the tools to do it themselves. And, uh, and so what does that entail, uh, joining your online program? Yeah. So, you know, what I have, what I have started, what I've created is I, f to work with me, we go through the course first because that is going to, for, for the, for the client, that is going to save them a ton of money because basically for the same price as one session with me, you're getting about 15 sessions with me. And so it's a lot easier than scheduling sessions with me, having to make the time, having to come up with the money for every session. I've just made it easier for people. You can do this at your own pace. Um, so you go through the rooted in health course, and this is what you, I'm teaching you all of this stuff. It's all, it's, it's educational. And then it's tools. I'm teaching you how to do EFT. I'm giving you the scripts to release the negative emotions yourself. I'm giving you the tools to release, um, you know, the, the negative self-talk, how to heal your emotions, how to release stress, how to take care of yourself, how to create health. That's what it's about. It's about creating and empowering yourself with radiant health and effortless joy and lasting energy. And Really, it's a. I'm teaching you how to become a participant in your life again, to get off of the sidelines, to have fun again, to be back in your body and just to feel better. And then because I, I did this because I was spending so much time, so many sessions with my clients doing the coaching part of it and not the actual healing part of it. And so I put all the coaching part of it into the course so that you can take that for a fraction of the cost, take all of that, go through it at your own pace. And then when you're ready, and if you feel like you need additional help, that's when we start working together one-on-one. -on -one. Um, most people now they go through the course and they're not needing to work with me anymore. And that's great. That's exactly what I want, um, you know, is for you to feel good and to not need somebody. But if you do, and that's totally fine, most people do need some extra, uh, an extra boost, some extra clearing. That's when we start working together one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of how it's set up right now. And it's really exciting. You know, we've, we have finished with the beta group through the, the rooted in health course and just the, the testimonials rolling in are move me to tears, to be honest, because I know this, this work is greater than me and I'm just kind of a mouthpiece. And I feel like I've, I've had this experience and I, I lived through this myself so that I can help other people. And I'm just grateful that I, 
I got to do this. So yeah, I love the uh, the the testimonials on your website is under the transformations tab, which I thought was a really clever name for your testimonial section. Uh, that's that's really awesome. And then and then uh, share with our listeners this um, the freebie you have the pop up that comes up that they can enroll for. Yeah, when you go to Harmony Dash Restored, um, it's going to come up. You're going to see it. It's a freebie. Um, I've got some, there's going to be a PDF download there that you can download. And it's um, a really simple step-by-step -step action plan for feeling happy and energized and healthy every day. Um, I'm basically giving you the keys to healing your physical or emotional imbalances through stress relief. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Zen to 10 in there, but there's some other things I'm going to talk about like the reason why you haven't healed and the key to healing and explain further how I healed and and how you can do that yourself. There's a video um, where I'm going to give you a little sneak peek into the course and, and some of the foundations of health. And so it's a really fun little kind of like a little healing starter kit. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, it's just been such a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for the emotional work. And that was great. Yeah. Yeah, keep uh, me posted. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love it. Uh, Megan, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, Harmony-Restored.com is Megan's website. And uh, I know some of my listeners are going to be very intrigued to go check you out. And uh, I'd love to, any listeners who go work with Megan and have a great experience and want to share with me, because I'm just, I'm just curious, uh, email me, <laughs> Ashley at LearnTrueHealth.com. I'd love to hear all about it. Uh, fantastic. Megan, I'd love for you to close out our interview today to share a challenge with our listeners. And you've already given us so many great tips for we can go out and start doing right now. Is there something you could challenge us to do for the now and for the next seven days to see a shift in our life? Yeah. You know, the thing I tell my clients every time I'm getting off the phone with them, I remind them that the most important thing that they can do after a session or any time, <laughs> you don't have to have a session to do this, is to create the intentional joy. And so do something that you love you know, turn on that music and, and dance with your kids or get in the kitchen and cook something or go for a walk or go on a date with your spouse or go to lunch with a friend. I don't care what it is, but do something every day and create that joy. And, you know, it can be simple and it can be extravagant. It doesn't matter. But that is where we start when we're in that place of feeling joy our feelings are is what creates disease or creates health in our body. And so if you can get into the feeling of joy, you are going to have this beautiful cascade of health to start pulsing through your body. And so that's how we create it. So start that cascade by creating joy. And it's so simple and it can be the Zen in 10. You can do it by, you know, working on the negative self-talk and talking positive to yourself. It doesn't matter how, but just create joy in your life, celebrate your life, be grateful for where you're at. And, um, and that's it. Yeah. Go be happy. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Go be happy. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Megan Buer. It is a has just been a pleasure having you on the show. Definitely surreal and such a delight. And you are absolutely welcome to come back on the show anytime. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. It's been wonderful. Enjoy what you heard today on your episode of the Learn to Health podcast. Did something move you, inspire you? Did you get great information that's going to change your life? Awesome. That's exactly what I'm here to do is to help you gain your health back. Please turn around and share this. If this is something that's helped you in any way, share this with those you love. Love the Learn True Health podcast and want to support us? Awesome. You can go to takeyoursupplements.com and you could support us that way. You'll get access to amazing supplements that are just really great quality for a great price. And there'll be someone on the other end of the line to help you pick out your supplements that are right for you. That's takeyoursupplements.com or join our membership, learntruehealth.com slash join. That's another great way to support our podcast, support our movement, and you'll be supporting yourself. Gain more information, wonderful videos, wonderful trainings, and you'll also be able to share those with those you love as well. So go to learntruehealth.com slash join. Want something fun for free? 
Go to LearnTrueHealth.com and right there on the front page, you'll see where you can get our free cookbook. I spent a lot of time making it and it was so much fun. It's really delicious, healthy recipes. And you can also get our seven day doctor course uh, right there. It's seven days of naturopathic videos sent right to your inbox and you can learn from top naturopaths on how to gain health naturally. So that's TakeYourSupplements.com for wonderful supplements. LearnYourHealth.com slash join to join our awesome membership, which is only open for a limited time. You can get our free healthy cookbook and you can also get for free seven days of wonderful naturopathic videos sent to you. Just go to LearnTrueHealth.com and you'll see it right there on the front page. Thank you so much for being a listener and thank you for sharing and helping others. Let's spread this information and turn this ripple into a tidal wave.